All right, so I have to bring the mic really close for this video because it's the last week of my secret project and it's the last guest video. Next week, I will be back and I will review what I have been doing the last month. But right now, we're going to watch a guest video and I'm super excited about this one. This guest video is from The Voice, Dan Worrell. And he's going to talk about a super interesting topic, at least for me as like, one of the biggest FabFilter fanboys. So Dan, let's get started. Hi, and big thanks to White Sea Studios for inviting me to guest host on his channel today. I don't have Vitsa's useful good looks, so I remain a disembodied voice in my videos. But we're going to talk mostly about ProQ3 today and that has a much prettier interface than I do. Vitsa and I both make no secret of the fact that we're big fans of FabFilter plugins. But I've had a few comments on my channel recently along the lines of, such and such a plugin is much better than ProQ3. Specific plugins mentioned include Melda M Auto Dynamic EQ and the Waves F6 Dynamic EQ. Well, I do have a license for the Waves one, so let's take a look. In what way is this better? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, of course. But uh, I don't think I'm being too controversial if I say that ProQ3 is much easier on the eye. And also much cleaner and less cluttered. So they can't mean the interface, right? What about features? The Waves plugin provides six bands compared with 24. There's no linear phase options, no EQ matching, no unusual EQ types such as Tilt EQ it's clearly not the feature set that they're talking about. What about basic audio quality? Okay, let's do a quick null test. 100 hertz bell nulls perfectly. 1 kilohertz bell, almost perfectly. 10k bell, miles off. Probably because the Waves plugin cramps at Nyquist. Which is perhaps ironic, as, as far as I'm aware, Waves were the first to market with a decramped EQ plugin. So we'll give ProQ3 a win on quality as well. That just leaves the dynamics options. And here, perhaps they have a point. The Waves plugin provides a full set of dynamics controls. Threshold, attack and release, a range control. While the Fab Filter just gives you a single control by default, the ring around the gain knob seems to act like the range control in F6 and that's all you get. You can click the little button and get a threshold slider if you want. But we still have way less control than the Waves plugin. Or so it seems. Let's try using them both in anger. Here's a typical situation where I find a dynamic EQ can be helpful. I've got a mix that seems too dominated by the 100 hertz region. That stuff there just seems overblown with fresh ears. However, when I cut that region, I don't like that either, as we're losing too much punch and thump. So I'll set up some expansion to put the thump back. And let's set the range about the same as the gain, so that it's getting expanded back to about unity. And drag down the threshold till the EQ curve starts to bounce as I want it. And then let's tweak the attack time. Probably needs to be as fast as it'll go or close to it. And finally, we can tighten up the release. And with a bit of tweaking, we can get the EQ to flatten out when the bass hits, but then cut again in between. If I toggle bypass, the mix still thumps with the EQ in but it's now tighter and punchier, and it feels like there's more space for the other elements to breathe. This kind of setting can be useful within a mix as well, especially in busy arrangements that have a lot of competing elements. If you have an acoustic guitar part that needs to fit into a rock power ballad, try expanding the low mid-range like this. It can make a massive difference. Okay, so let's try the same thing with Pro Q3. I'll start with a cut at that frequency. Then dial the dynamic gain up to unity, and we're done. 
It's behaving exactly as I want it to, with just two controls. Granted, I don't have the ability to fine-tune the release as I do in F6. But if I want to tighten things up further, I can probably do that better just by deepening the cut and the dynamic boost a bit. So this is the first of the two points I want to make. Q3 got me there way quicker than F6. And when you're mixing, speed is invaluable. Let's pause for a moment and get slightly philosophical. I've often compared learning to mix to learning to play a musical instrument. You can expect to suck to begin with. You'll improve gradually as you gain experience. And while theory certainly helps, there's no substitute for putting the time in and practicing. And that's the part I want to focus on. You can't learn to play an instrument without practicing. And a musician makes a very clear distinction between practicing and performing. If you mess up during rehearsal, you might stop the band and make everyone go from the bridge again until you get it right. But I wouldn't advise doing that on stage. If you mess up there, you just get back on track as quick as possible and keep the show going. I think it can be useful to split your studio time consciously into practice time and performance time. In practice time, you're not trying to actually produce any music. You're just learning your tools and trying out things you've never tried before. You can load a drum loop and smash it with every compressor you've got and focus on the differences between each. Pull up your last mix and try every flavour of saturation you've got. Even just taking the time to properly demo a plugin before buying it will count. Those of you who've seen some of my compressor videos might think that's the way I mix. I'll try out several different compressors on each source and analyse the subtle differences between them and finally pick the one perfect compressor with the ideal settings. But that's not how I mix at all. Watching those videos is more like watching me practice scales than watching me play a gig. When I actually mix, I'll pick the compressor that I think is most likely to do what I want. In this respect, having a small collection of plugins that you know well is way better than having everything that's out there. And if it gets me closer to the mix I want, I'll take it and move on. Because mixing is an iterative process. You can't set track one to perfection, then move on to track two and progress logically through a mix track by track. Because the perfect settings for track one depends on the context. And you don't have the context until you've mixed all the other tracks. Every move you make within a mix should therefore be regarded as provisional. If it gets you closer to your goal, bank it and move on. You might need to come back to it later. If you do, that's fine. It's part of the process. But the important thing is to keep the forward momentum and keep getting closer to your end goal. It's only when you get to the final stages, when everything is sitting together well and the mix is cooking, that you can have any confidence at all that your moves are correct and will survive to the final render. So the faster you get to that stage, the better the decisions you will make. And I consider that extra speed that the FabFilter plugin provides to be probably more valuable in the heat of a mix than the freedom to set the release time manually. But there's another, perhaps more fundamental difference between these two plugins, which I can demonstrate by dropping the gain by 12 dB. So I've reduced the level running into both plugins. Let's see how F6 has responded. Sure enough, I need to adjust the threshold to compensate. And now we're back where we were. I mean, no surprises, right? That's exactly what you'd expect. Now let's try Pro Q3. And it's behaving exactly as it was. I don't have to change a thing. Let's bring the gain back up to where it was. Q3 barely misses a beat, still behaving exactly as I want it to. What kind of sorcery is this? Let's examine things further with a fresh instance. I'll add a high shelf and set the frequency as low as it will go. So this is basically now a full band dynamics processor. And let's dial in some compression. When it does sound like compression, right? It's tightening up the transients, gluing parts together, just as you'd expect from a bus compressor.
Okay, let's drop the input gain by 12 dB. Q3 takes a little while to realize, but pretty quickly we're back to the same behavior as before. Let's boost the gain back to unity. And Q3 realizes pretty much straight away and goes back to compressing just the top few dB. So I'm guessing what's going on internally is that Q3 is calculating some kind of overall loudness value for the whole signal and using that to set the threshold automatically. Then the dynamics processing is keyed by the peak levels of just the affected region. Thinking of this in compressor terms, it's as if you've set a relatively high ratio, but then carefully automated the threshold so that you're always just catching the top few decibels of dynamic range. There are several implications to this. First of all, the automatic setting in Q3 isn't just what you use when you can't be bothered to set the threshold manually. It's actually potentially going to produce quite different results, and in some cases better results, unless you take the time to automate that threshold setting manually. Second, have FabFilter invented a new type of dynamics processor here? It's clearly a type of compression or expansion that's being applied. It doesn't sound at all like a transient designer type effect. And yet it's entirely level independent and sets its own threshold. The Fab Filters could put this algorithm into a full band plugin and have the best one knob dynamics plugin in town, in my opinion. Third, this is a compressor that doesn't affect dynamic range. That probably needs some explaining. Of course, it affects the micro dynamics and might potentially change your peak to average ratio. But it won't affect the macro dynamics, which is what musicians are talking about when they say dynamic range. So I can use it on a really dynamic mix like this one, with big changes in overall loudness between different sections. And those overall loudness changes won't be affected at all. Fourth, presets actually make sense with this dynamics algorithm. If you set a preset to squash the top 12 dB of dynamic range, that's what it will do whenever you load it, even if the signal you're processing is at a wildly different level to the one you saved a preset for. If you're thinking, why do I need presets for a one-knob dynamics algorithm? You're forgetting the complexity available elsewhere. How about a stereo widening preset that automatically compresses the low mid-range of the side channel? Or a dynamic tilt EQ that compresses the low frequencies while expanding the highs? Or why not the other way around, with a curvy tilt instead of a flat one? How about this one, designed to sound kind of like OTT once you've dialed the depth back to about 20%. So here's what appears to have happened. The Fab Filter guys invented a radical new way of handling dynamics processing tweaked it to the point where it does just what you expect and you don't even question it, then quietly and without fanfare added it to their existing EQ plugin. They didn't invent a fancy sounding name for it with a cool three letter acronym. They didn't build it into a whole new plugin and release it with a fanfare. They didn't even give it a whole knob. They just added a ring around the gain knob so the feature never gets in the way. And that's why I love FabFilter so much. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. So huge thanks to Dan for making this uh, content for me while I'm unable to. And yeah, go ahead and check his own channel. I'll link to his channel uh, down below. He's got a lot of very amazing videos. And honestly, he does way better plugin analysis than I do. So really check him out. It's all down below. Now, as said at the beginning of this video, next week I will be finally back revealing the projects that I have been working on. So really stay tuned for that. And if you're not subscribed already, make sure to subscribe to my channel as well. As always, I can really use your support because the project that I have been working on uh, has become way more expensive than I expected. So all my support links are in the description and down below. Uh, Patreon, affiliate links, and merchandise. And with that being said, thanks a lot for watching. I see you all next week. Keep pushing and bye-bye.